What's up with everybody? It's your man Moya B. And we're back at it, back at it with another reaction video. <laughs> Baby. Yep, so this is another special video request from Matthew Man. Matthew Man. Oh, again. Yeah. He's another really at it. Yeah. One. Thank you, Matthew Man. Thank you. So the name of this video is Genetics of the Maltese People. Latinized Arab Christians of the Mediterranean. Yeah. So um yeah, man, it's um another video from uh Master Man and yeah. we finna check it out, man. It's gonna be really interesting. I Dive right into it. In our modern world, it's easy to forget the rich history present in some of the lesser known regions. And long before this particular oh, nation joined mm -hmm. the European Union, Let's go there. entered into Eurovision contests, fierce and bloody battles were mm. fought on this land for glory and power, with perhaps no other country on earth today better embodying the spirit of the Crusades and other Islamic Christian conflicts than the island nation of Malta. Although Malta was technically reclaimed four years before the start of the First Crusades, it was not considered to be a holy land in the Middle East. It's That's where they have small island. Yeah. Really important yeah. as a strategic landmark, Malta. and its, and it's history is still deeply tied it. with the Vatican, Freemasons, and all manner of knights from the time of the Crusades. We discussed the Crusades in a video a few months ago yeah. and the impact that the European knights and settlers had on the area of the Levant and their descendants which still exist today, mostly in the country of Lebanon. And although the Crusades did end several centuries ago, the demographic influence of the wars was felt not only in the Near East, but in Europe as well. Malta is indeed a part of the European Union and Eurozone today, considered yeah. by most to be a part of the European continent. However, it's definitely a demographic anomaly among European nations for uh, many reasons, and yeah, the island so has beautiful. been shaped by dozens of really clean water. historical <laughs> events water that have been so clean. back mm -hmm. at least two millennia. Caught on the crossroads of many great ancient civilizations and cultures, Malta has a rather militarized history, although one of the first were the ancient Greeks, who had Greek-speaking colonies all over the Mediterranean and Black Sea in southern Europe, North Africa, and Southwest Asia, and Malta was incorporated later on as a part of the Empire of Carthage, which is best known as Rome's first early rival in its history. Carthaginians were a Semitic group descended from the ancient Phoenicians of the Levant, and were the predominant power in the Maghreb up until their defeat by the Romans during the Punic Wars and their absorption into said empire and thus marked the period of Roman rule in the islands of Malta where it was governed as a part of the Roman province of Sicilia along with the much larger neighboring island of Sicily. This was the longest period of rule for the islands as Malta remained in the hands of the Romans and later the Byzantines or Eastern Romans for nearly 1,000 years and during this time Malta was considerably Latinized with Italic settlers arriving from the Italian peninsula and would later on become one of the first areas of the Roman Empire to convert to Christianity with historians generally believing that St. Paul was shipwrecked on the island of Malta before arriving in Rome with the Maltese having great reverence for him to the this day. I've discussed in a previous video how virtually the entire Iberian Peninsula was mm -hmm. conquered by the Arab Muslims shortly mm. after Muhammad's death being incorporated as the Emirate of Cordoba, but one other area of Europe that people don't realize was battered by Arab advances was southern Italy, particularly huh. the island of Sicily, which became the Emirate of Sicily in 831 AD along yeah. with Malta. Similarly to Iberia, there was not a major genetic shift in the population during Muslim rule, which lasted for a little under two centuries, and the previous Christian Italic population was not entirely expelled, and the new Arab and North African settlers were relatively tolerant compared to other Muslim empires, and the island of Sicily along with Malta and a few other smaller islands were effectively Arabized, speaking a dialect known as Susulo Arabic, which is derivative of Maghrebi Arabic, especially that spoken in Tunisia. Hmm. It is likely that the islands of southern Italy and Malta would have remained Muslim throughout the ages had it not been for a new and exotic power storming in from the north. The Normans of Western Europe were responsible for a relentless decades-long assault of southern Italy, with the Normans, of course, being descended from the fierce Norse Vikings. That's what I was going to say. These Norman soldiers Viking established the Kingdom of Sicily, which was only very loosely aligned with the Papal States or the Byzantines, who, however bitter at losing the territory of southern Italy, still considered foreign Christians to be a preferable neighbor than Arab Muslims. Huh. This also marked the beginning of the re italicization of the region of Sicily, although Arab influences still remain in a few aspects of Sicilian society, such as in architecture and language. 
Malta was an exception to this, retaining the old Sasulo Arabic language from the previous era, although they were, of course, very heavily influenced by neighboring Sicily. And to this day, Maltese is considered to be the only Semitic language native to Europe, although a huge portion of its vocabulary is Italian in up. origin. Okay. The kingdom conducted a <laughs> process of de-Islamization, deporting virtually the entire Muslim population of Sicily and Malta to North Africa, or forcing them to convert if they stayed, similar to the Spanish Reconquista. The last Muslim assault on the Italian peninsula really seemed to ruffle the feathers of the Pope, who was located only a few hundred miles yeah. away in the heart of Western Christianity, Rome. This was one of the catalysts for the First Crusade, ah. which established the Crusader Kingdoms in the Holy Land, with Malta being used as a major resupply point for knights traveling from distant lands, and the historic connection between Malta and secret societies such as the Freemasons or the Knights Templar the is a really fascinating Templar. subject that unfortunately we'll have to save for another oh, day. That would be Malta a good eventually one. fell under the thumb of the French, followed by none other than the British of all people, which along with Cyprus and Gibraltar Walter greatly contributed to Great Britain's naval dominance of the 19th century. Small numbers of English and Irishmen also settled in Malta over mm. the years of British rule, assimilating into the Maltese population, which by then had a culture and ethnic identity distinct from the Sicilians of southern Italy. The Maltese people today have a diverse range in phenotypes similar to that of fellow southern European countries, yet because of their unique history, it's very common for those on Malta to have familial relations with many different countries, especially its northern neighbor, Italy, with records showing that at least 30% of native-born citizens of Malta have immediate or distant family in mm. southern Italy. Genetic studies show that around 8 to 16% of the DNA of the modern ethnic Maltese originates in the Middle East or North Africa, giving an average of about 12%, which is similar, albeit slightly higher than that for Spain and Portugal, where the gene pool is around 2 to 10% Middle Eastern or North African. The Italian island of Pentelleria, located not too far away, shares a similar history with Malta and Sicily, having been conquered by the Arabs and incorporated as a part of the Emirate of Sicily. However, unlike Malta, the inhabitants of Pentelleria have been effectively Italianized, no longer speak the old Semitic language, and have been a part of the country of Italy ever since Sardinia joined as well. During World War II, Malta was considered a target of extreme significance for the Axis powers for both Germany and Italy, the latter of which had long reckoned Malta to be rightful Italian soil in the same manner as Pentelleria and Sicily, and hoped to annex the islands as a part of Mussolini's greater Italian superstate, modeled after the great Roman Empire of old. Maltese Prime Minister Enrico Mizzi was actually jailed and deported to Uganda okay. in 1940 by the British because of his pro-Italian stance, along with dozens yeah. of other Maltese yeah, got him under. Italian collaborators. Yeah. Germany also recognized their major strategic importance for their North African campaign, and had Malta fallen, Gibraltar and Cyprus would have been the only major British regroup and supply mm. stations in the entire Mediterranean. Because of the country's connection to ancient Christianity and historical religious sites, Malta is by far one of the most religious nations in all of Europe, with almost 90% being active practitioners of Catholicism no. and a smaller number of Protestants, which is mostly a legacy of more than a century of British rule, and additionally a small number of Muslims who are virtually all recent migrants from North African countries like Tunisia and Libya, huh. although many migrants use Malta Look as a springboard people. to travel to yeah. and settle in other European countries. The small peninsular territory of Gibraltar is also somewhat similar to Malta, having been conquered and reconquered by many different powers, including the British. Only Gibraltar is actually still a part of the UK today, a major point Never of contention be between the British and the Spanish, ah. who also claim Gibraltar. The people of Gibraltar, known as Gibraltarians, are an interesting mix of primarily Iberian extraction with significant input from British, Italian, Moroccan, and even Maltese huh. settlers, with 10% of surnames of native-born Gibraltarians being of Maltese origin, and lying on the very southern tip of Spain, have a bit more North African admixture than Spaniards or the Maltese, giving them a darker complexion on average, although appearance greatly varies as always. With the aftermath of the Crusades simmering down and relations between East and West opening up significantly, countless traders and merchants from Southern Europe began to stream into the once off-limits Ottoman Empire. And this was especially true for the Maltese, lying just on the doorstep of the Islamic world. 
Tens of thousands of Maltese traders settled in North African countries, especially Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt, and this was some of the first musings of the Maltese diaspora, which is quite impressive even by European standards, with there being over 100,000 Maltese in both Australia and the United States each, and smaller numbers in the UK, Canada, and other members of the Anglosphere. Compare this to the population of Malta today, which is a little less than half a million people. Mm. And in many cases in America, Malta was mistaken to be a city in Italy because of the immense cultural similarities between the two. And although they are indeed connected, the people of Malta remain quite distinct. Huh. So really, rather than being Europeanized Arabs, the Maltese are Europeanized, Arabized Europeans, who are a combination <laughs> of Romans, Greeks, Arabs, and Vikings, which certainly makes them a very unique culture yeah. and gives them one of yeah. the stranger histories combination of a lot. Yeah. Their connection to the Vatican and the Crusades has helped to solidify their self-proclaimed reputation as defenders of Europe and Christendom, and this has greatly contributed to their sense of heritage and national identity today. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the island and people of Malta and the many chapters in their history book. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time. All right. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, it's pretty I cool. I definitely didn't know anything about the island of Malta before. Me neither. I never heard of it. So I a lot of this stuff is like I real new to me. Heard of it, but yeah. Well, I mean, that's just it. You go over to Europe or the Middle East or south asia or southeast asia and there's so many different countries like mm -hmm. little countries that we don't like we're not used to knowing about like yeah. you don't really like, we don't typically take like yeah. world geography and no. school here you know like we don't know about all these countries yeah i'm um the the place is like a small island but it looks really, really yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's small island just off really the nice. coast of Sicily. The water looks clean. Mm -hmm. Like, it would be a nice why, place to visit. Which is why in the picture, it's like, it reminds me of Greece, but it makes sense because it's in that same Mediterranean yeah, in the area, area yeah. so it looked a lot like Greek. Yeah. Greece does. Yeah, so, man. But it looked gorgeous. Yeah. It sounds super interesting, super diverse um, cultures. So, yeah. Another really Pretty cool, cool place yeah. to learn about. It would be. Yeah. And a visit. Yeah. But, everybody ready in this video. Matthew, man, thank you for your thank request you. and your support. Uh, make sure to subscribe to Mason Man. If you want to send us a special video quest, check out the link to our Streamlabs. It's going to be in our description and our video card. When you leave the link, make sure to keep it under 12 minutes. Don't forget to subscribe. And thumbs it up. Turn on notifications. It's your memory. Be. And Nicole. We're going to catch you on the next. Stay awesome. Peace and love, baby.